Special thanks to YouTubers Poseidon and Artimation for helping me with the research of this video. They will be linked below. 2015 was an interesting time. We saw the rise of many creations breaking into internet conscious and sometimes even the mainstream. No matter where you looked, you couldn't get away from media around games such as Minecraft or Five Nights at Freddy's. These two games, especially Minecraft, have solidified their place in pop culture and with the media that we all consume today. An obvious and undeniable part of what started to make these pieces of entertainment grab a wider range of people and become more accessible was fan-created content. This range being anything from the simple and common let's play to some more analytical analytical videos discussing various findings in the games themselves, or even explaining how certain aspects of the game operate. You can argue that some pieces of content may objectively be easier or harder to produce than others, but generally speaking, I think all this content serves a purpose one way or another. One contribution to fan-created video content about certain franchises I think is heavily underspoken about while in these discussions is animated content. Undeniably, some of the most high effort and hard to produce content is animation. Both Minecraft and Five Nights at Freddy's have had their fair share of animations since their inception to now, with no sight of them going away anytime soon. These communities are strong in their own right, having so much depth to them that they can be considered full sub-communities to the main one. We've seen many animators come and go from these communities. Some rose, some fell, and some... Yeah, let's not talk about that one. But one thing is clear, animation content for these two games are very important to the history and development of these properties. Of course, with the growth of these two games, over time more professional people in the business would start to see this as an opportunity. The concept of YouTube animation companies is not a new thing. We have seen many pop up over the years, one of them even becoming a titan of the entire animation industry, as well as one of the newest most subscribed channels. It's no surprise that a medium like this would be as lucrative as it is. And with many having the opportunity to rise alongside the franchises you make videos about, it's no surprise that some people would find combining these two together would lead to success. This was the exact thought of Seth Belanger, who seemed to strike gold with his animation Survive the Night, based off the FNAF fan song of the same name. Today, the video is sitting at an unbelievable 61 million views, bringing the channel to great YouTube fame for the next coming years. Little did Seth know at the time that he and his brother, Zachary Belanger, more on him later, would go on to turn this channel into an entire studio of creators making consistent, high-quality animations for a target demographic of 8-13 to 13 year olds to enjoy. Unfortunately, there are a lot of details that I am leaving out of this seemingly humble origin story. As time went on, greed, allegations of plagiarism, bullying, poor workplace conditions, and much more, would start to be the legacy that older fans would start to remember Enchanted Mob, as well as their joint studio, Examination 4. Enchanted Mob, Examination, and their game studio, Mob Games, have an infamously shady past that they will try to desperately put a front up and pretend that none of it exists. But to understand what led up to this change, how did Enchanted Mob and Examination get their start? Enchanted Mob was a channel founded in early 2014 by brothers Seth and Zach Belanger. Judging on what time this video goes up, they may have just had their 8th anniversary. The channel would stay inactive for 2 months after its creation, eventually having a welcome video uploaded, which definitely has probably seen better days. Since this, the channel would upload semi-consistently, uploading videos that would range from a minute and a half to 8 seconds. Just 16 videos into the channel's discography, they would find massive success with their first full-length music video, done to the, at the time, fan-favorite Five Nights at Freddy's fan song, Survive the Night, which has almost doubled the amount of views of the original upload. Since then, they would follow up with many more successful FNAF animations of other songs about the game. It seems that Enchanted Mob have found their fitting in content creation with these five Five Nights at Freddy's related animations. They would drastically grow since the release of Survive the Night. This success from the FNAF community would become even more apparent as any video derivative from Five Nights would get a pitiful amount of views compared to the tens of millions their FNAF uploads would get, with one of the only exceptions being their original work Be a Hero, which sits at 1.1 million views today. Other original works would find themselves in the millions down the line too, but even so, it was still a fraction of what they would accumulate through animations relating to FNAF. 
Just before the creation of Survive the Night, Enchanted Mob would open their first division, being 3A Display. This channel became to be run by seemingly two workers under Enchanted Mob, creating other FNAF content, as well as some animations on other games occasionally. You may know them because of this legendary thumbnail. Now the channel is mainly used for uploading clips of a certain series I will get to very shortly. Anyway, while in this time, the original channel would surpass themselves once more, with the release of an animation done to the famous JT music song Join Us for a Bite, which has surpassed Survive the Night double its view count, sitting at an astronomical 132 million views today. If it wasn't clear by now, it's fairly obvious that this studio has found their cash cow. Since this upload, you can see a major jump in production quality, as this arguably put them on the map for better talent even more than Survive the Night did. Although 132 million is a nigh groundbreaking number for any YouTube channel, studio or not, in just another two years, Enchanted Mob would surpass themselves once more with their upload Build Our Machine. This time instead of FNAF, they would tackle Bendy at the height of its popularity. Although they would see success with these Bendy animations, as well as some Undertale ones, the ones that would undeniably stick the most are the FNAF animations. Sometime in the making of these music videos, Enchanted Mob seemingly wanted to branch out more, so on the 15th of February of last year, Enchanted Mob would create their ongoing series that they are most known for today, Fazbear and Friends. Except, not really. You see, the first two episodes of Fazbear and Friends were actually uploaded to the Zamination channel, which as mentioned before, merged with Enchanted Mob sometime in 2020 for not public reasons. There's not much to talk about when it comes to the early life of Zamination. They started off with fairly good success for making creations that were based off of YouTube channels that were popular at the time, majorly picking up steam about three years ago. Somewhere down the line, this got the attention of Enchanted Mob, and the studios had agreed to do a business decision to merge, ultimately being an objectively good idea for the two studios. The current state of Enchanted Mob and Zamination has brought the studios to great success. Every episode of Fazbear and Friends, as well as other full-length videos, all surpass a million views, usually being in a 2-3 million range. However, long-term fans have discussed their resentment towards modern Enchanted Mob. I remember watching Enchanted Mob growing up. Sad to see what's happened to them nowadays. I used to watch Enchanted Mob when I was younger. Sad to see them go down this path. It's very funny how the creators of Poppy Playtime have a YouTube channel dedicated to Minecraft FNAF animations for kids. But it really comes to the question, what makes Enchanted Mob different in the eyes of its older audience now than when they were younger? The most obvious reason is just a lot of them have simply grew up. Survive the Night is more than 6 years old now. It would be obvious to say that a lot of people introduced to the channel would have a more refined taste outside of Minecraft FNAF animations as they got older. It's just a part of growing up. But even so, as you grow up, you can sometimes look back to things like this and have fond memories of it. What makes Enchanted Mob different, and why is their name infamous to a big portion of its older audience nowadays? But first... Man, these wasps have been a real problem in the neighborhood lately. This is the fifth house they burnt down this week. What could I do to see how to solve this? I should probably look up how to exterminate a wasp- OH MY GOD! We tracked your data to this house for it was not encrypted. For punishment on trying to get rid of us, your house will now be tagged by our flames. Oh, oh dear lord! How could I have been so stupid to have let this happen? Was there any way I could have circumvented this? You could have easily used NordVPN to have this not happen, my friend. NordVPN? What on earth is that? Oh, while I and my army are burning your house down, I will gladly explain to you what NordVPN is. NordVPN is a service that allows you to have your data and internet traffic be secured and encrypted so no outside source can see it through the remote server. What? So, you're saying I could have not had my house burned down by wasps today if you didn't get a hold of my data? And internet traffic? Not only that, NordVPN allows you to change your region to anywhere, meaning you can even access region-specific content outside of your location, meaning if you want to access a show or movie not available in your country, you could. Or I should say, you should have, because your house is burning down. Not only that, but you can use it on any platform. Yes, even you Linux users. With the speed tests showing NORDVPN is in fact the fastest VPN on the market, enabling it for internet browsing will not be a hassle. Gee wasp, my house may be burning down, but thank you for the information to avoid it being burnt the next time. Even if you are all serial arsonists. No problem. I also wanted to mention that if you use the link below you can get 72% off your first payment. That is right. 
Anyways, make sure you all click the link below to be careful in your research for us, the arsonist wasps. Again, that is nordvpn.com slash tags for 72% off your first year. Thank you, Nord. Disclaimer, NordVPN does not condone arsonist wasps. Alright, now back to the video. The first piece of controversy the duo have seemed to have gotten themselves into was the creation of a joint channel. Animation Sins was created on October 2nd of 2017. The channel is made up of a group who makes Cinema Sins parody videos, usually on small animators. The channel's original idea was to give constructive criticism towards animators, while having satirical criticisms for entertainment. Although this concept seems like a fun one, the channel ultimately fell ill to the same blurred lines of what is genuine criticism and what is satirical, just like modern day cinema sins. You can see an obvious bias between videos criticized from their own studio, to videos criticized by other animators. The channel has remained stagnant for over a year now, so I think the studios have realized this. One reason as to why Enchanted Mob may have been starting to take a controversial path is because around this time, Zach Belanger really started to be involved in the managing of Enchanted Mob. And ever since, Seth's channel would start to head down the path of becoming more commercialized and more business-centered. Zach's involvement has been discussed mostly negatively by many people. Not because he turned the channel into a company, but just because he was a bad manager. Allegations of poor workplace treatment and manipulation start to run rampant in the discussion of the two studios. A comment from a very important video, more on that in a second, stated presumably Zack, as well as other higher-ups in the studio, would fire anyone who questioned their work schedule or ask for a pay raise. This led to many animators to quit, and a few came out about their experiences after leaving the team. But you might have noticed I said this comment was left on a video of greater importance, and I think it's time to discuss that. This comment was left on a video of the Minecraft animator Eckercoaster, who has a less than savory past with Enchanted Mob and Zamination. Eckercoaster's channel was created on the 2nd of June, 2016. He would seemingly stay reserved to his own animations up until he got the attention of Enchanted Mob back in the start of 2018. During this time, Zack tried to convince Eckercoaster, who I'll be referring to as Ethan going forward, to join 3-8 Display, among other things. Ethan ultimately refused the proposal, and tensions between him and Enchanted Mob started to ring up. There is hearsay, as well as undeniable proof of these people talking about him behind his back about their opinions on his lack of skill, and how he won't make it anywhere if he doesn't join the company. This stuff would not look good on its own, but although these people could be seen as rude and somewhat manipulative, I personally don't think they've done much yet to be considered genuinely malicious. Obviously, my opinion on the subject matter was nowhere near mutual to how Ethan felt about their words at the time. Zack would continue to converse with Eckercoaster, getting into an argument with Zack accusing Ethan of stealing their intro. Because Eckercoaster's outro music was used years before the use of it in Build Our Machine, it's still not very clear if Zack was just joking here. He makes little to no effort to back pedal on saying if it was a joke or not. The only explanations here are if it's not a joke, then either Zack is just not too bright and he genuinely believes that Eckercoaster stole his outro, or more believably, he knows exactly what he's doing and is just trying to get a rise out of Ethan. But I digress. I do believe that it's the latter of the two options though and you'll see why. Going forward, Zack and Seth would ignore Eckercoaster's wishes to not have their videos be featured on animation sins. Although this makes Ethan sound like he just doesn't want criticism, we have established that a lot of criticisms animation sins gives out are not necessarily helpful, and apparently from Ethan's perspective, it only helped contribute to harassment towards him. This would all accumulate to a document released on the 17th of July, 2020 compiling all the ways he believed Enchanted Mob and Zamination have wronged him in the past. Most of his gripes were targeted towards Zack B, and that is all that I listed off here throughout this discussion. Ever since the altercations of yesteryear, the studio and Ethan have been doing their own separate things. But during this time, both the team and himself have been working on two very big projects. Eckercoaster had been working on the first act of his game, Venge, a FNAF and Bendy-inspired horror game that would have multiple chapters released. The game stayed fairly underground after its release, not really getting the attention of Let's Players or really any sort of big traction at all. The game would stay stagnant after the release of the first chapter, presumably Ethan working on more content for the game in the future. But around October of 2020, Enchanted Mob and Zamination came together to form the company Mob Games, a developer subsidiary of Enchanted Mob, which would release their first game a year later. Ever since the release of Poppy Playtime, the relationship between it and Venge has been extremely rocky. 
Since we have already established the animosity the two creators have against each other, it's safe to say when Ethan started to see similarities between his game and Playtime, he would speak up about it. Ecker Coaster accused Mob Games of stealing many story beats and ideas for assets from Venge to put into Poppy Playtime. He points out that although the concept of exploring an abandoned building isn't new, the way that Poppy Playtime went around doing it is very similar to a lot of things Venge did in Ethan's eyes. His biggest note is the similarities between the descriptions of the games, as he specifically notes the idea of an entertainment company miraculously disappearing to be a very common trait between the two plots of the games. He also gives examples of character designs and decors that look eerily similar to what you can find in Venge. And judging by the past that these two have, it would be safe to say that this could be more than a coincidence. When this thread was published, many people came into support of Ecker Coaster, many agreeing that a lot of what's been compared seems like blatant plagiarism. There were also a lot of others who were a bit more skeptical about it, stating that both games take heavy beats off of Bendy and the Ink Machine. Although a lot of assets and the plot of Venge can be heavily compared if not be seen as nearly identical to that of Poppy Playtime, something that I feel a lot of people fail to bring up in the discussion of this is Ethan's inspiration off of Bendy. A chapter-by-chapter -chapter release, companies that were on top of their respective industries falling out of nowhere, and something that is prevalent in all of these games, character and monster designs that try to cater to the demographic of children by playing into the innocent things turns evil trope that FNAF heavily popularized. Do I think Poppy Playtime saw Venge and decided to copy it out of spite? No. Do I think Mob Games saw things from Bendy and Venge and decided to copy it out of sheer laziness? Yes. The Belanger and Preciado brothers may be malicious, but something that I think a lot of people fail to mention is that the staff of Mob Games are probably not that bad of people. Much like every other big project, the people actually creating the internal aspects of the games are usually just given what the creative director gives them. It's the creative decisions that I, and a lot of other people, seem to have a problem with. And for me, these problems outweigh the plagiarism allegations. Poppy Playtime simply has the problem of being a greedy, pandering mess. You have this $5 entry to what is basically a 30 minute tech demo that you can beat in an even shorter amount of time. This obviously may not be a shock to most though. Ever since the inception of these channels, it was obvious that they wanted to entertain children. This isn't the case of a content creator, or in this case, a studio, changing their content to be more brand friendly. Enchanted Mob and Zamination have always been Minecraft Center animation channels obviously having an overwhelming majority viewer base of children to preteens. This I honestly feel is fine. Something that I feel I mistakenly left out in my Horror Games for Kids video which precedes this one is that obviously, making content skewed towards a younger audience is completely fine. Where I and many others start to have a problem is either if these studios or individuals start to pretend as if their piece of entertainment is not meant for this audience. And not even in the, it's for kids but kids don't like being treated like kids so we'll make it more adult kind of way. Pop Poppy Playtime The Game seems like it's trying to be a horror game not meant for children, but everything else around the game is trying desperately to pull in fans as young as 4 years old. This obviously is a smart tactic to do. If you try to cater to every age demographic at once, you will ultimately have a lot more people checking out your product, meaning the absolute most people willing to view it. But as we have seen time and time again, executing this just right is harder than a lot of people think. And soon enough, your audience is going to move on to the next game that does the exact same thing. Because after a while of trying to cater to everyone, you end up catering to no one. So, what's the take of this video? Boycott Poppy Playtime slash Enchanted Mob? Defend Ecker Coaster with all our life? Go around trying to spread the word to as many people as possible? Honestly, I don't really think we need to do any of those things. Enchanted Mob has had a very rough history, especially in its later years. But even though undeniably Zack Belanger at the very least may be a bad person, I have superstitions that the backlash they have been getting, way even before this video, will be more than enough to skew people away from supporting Mob games. There is a lot of other things that these studios have gotten into controversy for, like their sometimes very weirdly sexual animations that remind you are meant to be for a child audience. Or most famously, their controversy for the Poppy Playtime NFT 
NFTs. These are also very big reasons to not like these people, and I originally had a whole section written about why NFTs are bad, but honestly, I don't really think I need to give you guys that discussion. Neither do I think it's really the appropriate place to have it. Hence why they couldn't really be fit to the greater point that I was trying to make. What I can say though, is that NFTs are just another example of Poppy Playtime meaning to just be another cash grab game with no long staying integrity. When or if all the chapters do release, the game will fall into complete irrelevancy, with possible talks of a sequel, but probably never going anywhere. With the first trailer to chapter 2 being shown just days before this video, here's hoping that the series may be able to turn around after chapter 1. What was shown off looks at least a little more dynamic than the first 30 minutes we were originally given, but I am also not going to hold my breath. But anyways, I have been Dags, and until next time, see ya. Look at this, you've got, you've got pockets for the oranges. We're look, in we a, can, look. We're can. in an invisible war, my friend. It's 8.30. I got up like an hour ago and we're kind of late on schedule because I decided to make a breakfast burger for breakfast. This dude did a 10 hit combo. This dude's doing straights. Wow. <laughs> this is a call out post to the executives at a chanted mob. You know, it's been three years, but you just shut the fuck up. I'm creating the goddamn Sonic Iceberg Part 3, woman, and you need to back off. Do you know what power I hold now? I have all the games, I could win with zero games. I created Minecraft. Do you know who I am? I know it's John Nintendo, and I'm the CEO of Nintendo. Now back off and let me create the Sonic Iceberg Part 5. I know it's been three years. Yeah. Man, I really want to take a break from being so damn negative lately. Why don't I talk about something that I actually do enjoy?